Hello and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. In this installation of my Raspberry Pi series, we'll look at TCP dump and what it can do for you in terms of capturing network traffic on your Raspberry Pi when you're troubleshooting a problem or just want to see what's going on with the wire. Okay, now that we've got our Raspberry Pi terminal screen up, and I've already done the step that normally you should always do when installing a new application and that is to make sure you've got the latest files for apt-get that can do the update. Now sometimes if we've seen from some of my other recordings that the name of the application that you're going to install isn't necessarily quite what you think it's going to be so let's do a sudo apt cache search and we'll do tcp dump we'll just hope that that's the right spelling of it and it's going to show you everything that's got uh, tcp dump as a part of it and if we go down the page here voila there we are command line network traffic analyzer so now we'll do a sudo apt get install tcp dump And it shouldn't take it, but just a little bit to get installed here, assuming the Internet's not overloaded tonight. And looks like it's got both the files that it needed. It's going to do a little bit of unpacking here and should be installed here in just a moment. Okay, and it appears to be ready to go. So, you know, you'd be tempted just to do a TCP dump, and it should say, you know, this starting to capture information. Well, you already see here that it's found, it says no suitable device found. Well, in this case, that's actually an indication of an error, and it's a permissions issue. So if we repeat the same process and do sudo tcp dump, now you can see it capturing a whole bunch of things. And this is good. I mean, this is it says that you're you're up and running, and then that's just a matter of doing our old fan uh, control C, and then that stops it. Now you see this point's already captured 113 packets and it says received by filter. Now what we did is considered a raw capture so it really wasn't stopping anything. So let's double check what our address is. Okay, 222. And what we can do here, just a real simple thing. Well, we'll start one, one step at a time here. We'll do a sudo tcp dump. And if you're doing just a very brief capture, you can do a dash C 10, that's 10 space dash, and sorry, not dash here, I'm reading my notes and I didn't read it right. What this will do is it stops the capture after 10 packets. Well, approximately 10, in this case, that actually picked up 14. So these are just some background uh, communications that's going on and then a real simple signature if you know if you're not seeing something so far what you'll want to do is do a pseudo space let's go let's repeat our IP address here make sure we've got it right and we can do a pseudo space TCP dump and we'll tell it to I only want to watch ICMP and again we'll stop after 10 packets. So what we're going to do here is we'll bring up a terminal window and we'll do a ping 192.168.15.222. And you see it just it didn't show any other traffic and we'll go ahead and stop that ping and then we'll close out the terminal window. So that's it. In some future uh, recordings that I'm going to do. I'll show you how to do some other signatures and 
just as importantly show you how to get the capture file that you created or that we will be creating with some of the future attempts off of the file I mean off of the uh, the SD card and what we can now show is what I'm taking with so far is we'll actually show you the process to kind of get you started and we will do a sudo space tcp dump space dash w and this says we're going to write a capture file and we'll do test space w test dot pcap and we will just to make it manageable we'll say stop after 10 packets now at this point it didn't show anything because you what you essentially did is a redirection of what was on the screen out to a file and if we just do an ls okay there is the file that you just created the one where it shows their test dot pcap and if you want to see a little bit more we can do an ls space dash all and that actually tells you date time file size and i'm logging in with the the raspberry pi default account and because i'm using sudo it actually is going to show it as root so that's it that's a very basic capture you know for those of you who've got some experience with with doing uh, filters in wireshark you've got an idea of where to get started of course there's the the man page that will bring up quickly here and you can also get to these on the uh, on the internet so you can actually have them to print out and, work and go over so this you know gets you started and we'll just do a queue for quit so in the in the next podcast like i said we will you know i'll walk you through getting the files off where we use something called scp and there's other ways to do it but this is i'm trying to go with the things that are built in and this brings us to the end of another podcast appreciate everyone's time and watching this as well as reading the accompanying post that's on my website to see the other videos i've done in the raspberry pi and other series and the articles that i've done with them please visit my website at www.ronnutter.com if you have any questions or have any requests you'd like me to look at in a future video you can contact me uh, uh, via the uh, contact me button on the website and i'll be glad to do what i can for you thank you again for your time